It's time. It's time for the Billy. For the Billy. Billy Flynn experience. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for another Billy Flynn experience. I am your host, Billy Flynn. Thank you so much for joining us. We're coming live here in Germany this Friday night. Well, actually, it's morning here. Hope everyone had a, I don't know, don't want to call it Thanksgiving anymore. I mean, that's not the uh, proper term. So let, I'll just say I uh, hope everyone had a wonderful family gathering and uh, enjoying your days off of work for those that are taking the time off to be with the family and friends on this weekend Black Friday. Although here in Germany they don't call it Black Friday. They call it Black Week. <laughs> Black Week. I kind of feel good. Makes me feel special. Okay, we're going to get into tonight's tonight's subject matter. I don't know. We're going to go. I guess we're going to look at the debacle of Balenciaga. And I don't know it's all over the internet. It's all over social media, so it's really not much to go into, but it's very strange that everything is everything is coming apart or everything is coming to full circle based on what Ye has been saying over the past 6 months. About media, the music entertainment business, fashion. And I cover pretty much uh, all of this in my other, uh, my other podcast. So we're not really going to, I don't really want to discuss uh, the, the 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 thing that's going on with Balenciaga, like I said, it's all over the media. It's all over the internet and social media. Yes, it's it's crazy. I don't think uh, personally. I don't think that the designer or the um, I wouldn't say the designer, but um, the head designer goes by the name of Demna. Vasalia and him being the creator, the creative director. Okay, I think that's what they call them. But based on uh, what's been all over the media and their 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 recent ads involving children and some of their fashions, I'm not going to say it because, uh, like I said, it's 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 all over you know all over the internet, and I'm pretty much sure everyone knows. What is going on? But again, strangely enough, that Ye was canceled by this very company, along with Adidas and the Gap and and a lot more other companies that he was attached to based on, again, some of the things that he felt were involved in his his subsequent downfall. Okay, so again as the title of tonight's show it says the prophecy of Jesus. Okay, I'm you know, a play on words. But yeah, it is kind of what it is. Yea, Kanye West have been 
have been saying all of the all of the 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 the, the bad business and the discomfort that he has been going through with his businesses him being taken down from the billionaire status and it seems that the media and other companies are purposely trying to discredit him and spread a lot of the misinformation about Kanye West. And I, you know, as I'm as I'm as I'm thinking about all this and I was thinking about it all day before you know because I wanted to get a lot of the information because I you know personally I don't believe in conspiracy theories and again from my research you know to gather all the information to do tonight's show I have to stop and think like well you know I guess that everyone has been saying how how demonic and evil the music industry is or just the entertainment business. How demonic and evil psychopathic individuals that run these companies. And again, I had to stop and think about all of the the musicians that have mysteriously died. And again, at the time that that these entertain these entertainers that passed away, you know, it was always circled around that they were murdered, that um, they were basically just made to shut up and go away and I never believed that but I have to stop now and I have to you know ask myself is is there some truth in this so again I had to to basically get a lot of the the information and that's what I did and it was shocking. I want to play something for you. I know that this will never happen again in history. There will never be a situation where people end a multi-billion dollar deal off of a tweet. Gotcha. Thank God no one was hurt in the process. And I feel free. <laughs> On November 19th, 2016, a week and a half after Donald Trump won the presidential election, Kanye West, now known as Ye, held a concert in Sacramento. Most people in the audience were, of course, young people and presumably Hillary Clinton voters and presumably deeply disappointed by her loss a week and a half before. So in the middle of the show, West stopped performing and started talking about politics. Google lied to you, he said, by suggesting to its users that Hillary was going to win. Quote, Facebook lied to you. I'm not here to massage you with a fake truth telling you that Hillary's going to win over and over and over. You were lied to by Google. You were lied to by Mark Zuckerberg. Middle America, West continued, showed you how they felt. Well, at this point, some of the audience began to boo, but West kept going. He complimented Donald Trump repeatedly. At one point, he used the phrase, make America great again. It was, to put it mildly, not the kind of thing you normally hear at a rap concert. And then, two days later... Kanye West was in the hospital. Well, at the house of his family's exercise trainer, a man called Harley Pasternak, West apparently suffered some kind of mental break. Pasternak called an ambulance to pick him up. West was taken away, and then he was sedated with at least seven different psychiatric medications, including benzodiazepines, lithium, sleeping pills, and olanzapine. News reports suggested that West had experienced a profound psychiatric episode. He'd gone completely off the deep end. He'd gone crazy. And they've been saying that ever since. West, over time, though, told a very different story. In his telling, after what he'd said on stage in Sacramento, Harley Pasternak was trying to shut him up. Pasternak, he said, was not simply a trainer, but instead an agent of ideological control. 
Pasternak's job was to keep West from straying from the script, and he's willing to use powerful drugs to do it. That's what he said. But very few people took that claim seriously. In fact, it was exactly the kind of thing a crazy person would say. My trainer drugged me into submission. He's trying to make me into a zombie. Right. Sure he did. Have another olanzapine shot, Kanye. You look tired. So that's where the story stood until the other day. Nobody believed Kanye West. Then West posted something remarkable on Twitter, which for some reason virtually all of American media ignored, which is odd because media outlets are not usually in the business of ignoring remarkable things, but they did. And what he posted was a picture of a text exchange that he had had with Harley Pasternak. Pasternak was explaining that West had better stop saying, quote, crazy stuff. In other words, he'd better get back on script or else he would be severely punished. Quote, second option, if you don't shut up, quote, I have you institutionalized again, where they medicate the crap out of you, and you go back to zombie land forever. Play date with the kids just won't be the same. End quote. Try, if you can, to imagine a more sinister threat than that, a more chilling threat than that. Do what I say, or I will turn your brain to mush. I will destroy your relationship with your own children. I will send you back to, quote, zombie land forever. Effectively, I'll kill you. Now, keep in mind, this is from West's, quote, trainer, not his physician. This is the guy he'd hired to help him do squats. A trainer? Really? Do they talk like that at your gym? Probably not. So what's going on here exactly? Well, according to his bio, Harley Pasternak, who was not denied writing these texts, once worked for the Canadian military, where he participated in experiments that measured the effect of various drugs on the human mind. Is that training relevant to this story? We don't know. We do know that based on this text exchange, which again, Harley Pasternak has not said is untrue or fake, on the basis of that, law enforcement agencies definitely ought to be looking very closely at Harley Pasternak, who, by the way, apparently has dozens of other celebrity clients some of whom seem to be out there campaigning. Based on these texts, this looks like a crime. Why is no one investigating it? The fact that no one is investigating it tells you a lot. It says, I'm going to help you one of a couple ways. First, you and I sit down and have a loving and open conversation, but you don't use cuss words. And everything that is discussed is based in fact, and that's some crazy stuff that dumb friend of yours told you or you saw on a tweet. Second option, I have you institutionalized again where they medicate the crap out of you and you go back to zombie land forever. Play date, play date with the kids just won't be the same. You wanted to medicate me every day. You realize like they could have just switched to medication and I wouldn't be here. And on the news, they would have said it was because of a mental issue. And every time they say I'm crazy, it's just when I'm saying the truth. So what's the crazy part, really? What's the crazy part, really? Okay, see. After I found out uh, a lot of the uh, the information, again, it started making more sense to me. First of all, I would like to... Uh, applaud Fox News and this gentleman Tucker Carlson I have to applaud him for that I never really listened to well I don't listen to mainstream news but when I came across that audio I listened to it about maybe three or four times in a row because I couldn't believe what was being said and of course, then I found Ye's clip where he read exactly from the text that he had with his trainer. And mysteriously, this sounds a lot again. And I'm going to use Michael Jackson. I'm going to use Prince as an example. But there's many different entertainers, actors, musicians, sports figures that have died mysteriously. 
And then, of course, once the media get a hold of it, they'll spin it. And they'll give it a whole nother narrative or a whole nother explanation on how these individuals died. And again, Ye has been speaking out about the darkness or the dark side of the entertainment business. And there there's proof. And how is all this connected with the businesses that he partnered with over the past couple of years? Or well, actually with Adidas, it's been I don't know, close to, I don't know, maybe six, seven, seven years. I'm not really into the fashion per se when it comes to Adidas and, and, and Kanye West. But I know that it was a lucrative partnership and it's, you know, been years. Again, as the partnership ended, that's when he was basically trying to tell everyone what is going on behind closed doors. No one believed him. Everyone said he was crazy. And now everything that he has been saying is coming into light. I just want to know is do do everyone still think he's crazy? Because personally, I never thought one day, one time that he was crazy, that Ye had mental issues. I never thought one time. And I looked at his outbursts, his rants as him being an artist, a very passionate artist. Most artists are like that. True artists are like that. Very passionate. But the media, the same media that Ye has been speaking on for the past couple of months, that same media had spun their narrative to paint Kanye West as insane. And to give you an example of just what happened right around the same time, that this fallout or this debacle with Balenciaga, you have TMZ, Harvey, whatever his last name is. He runs TMZ. We know that for sure, but TMZ puts the story out about Ye showing nude pictures of Kim Kardashian to his ex-employees right around the same time just so it seems that it's a bait and switch they give you this part of the news because it's still you know yay is still kind of a hot topic a trending topic so they put this in front of so everyone to pay attention to what's going on over here, but no one is paying attention to what's going on over on the left. And that is the Balenciaga situation with their ad campaign with the children and the accessories that they are trying to sell to the masses. Now, it's been a, a, an, an, up, an uproar about the ad campaigns. And it is very disgusting. It's very, it's very demonic. But I, I, I still have to question how did or why? It's not so much as how, but why? Well, actually, no, it is how would something like this be able to bypass all of the steps. And because of the fact that I've, I've been a photographer in the, in the commercial sector years ago, so I know what it takes to shoot an ad campaign. 
and the steps of different departments that images have to go through to be signed off. And then you have your your editors, your 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 printers, you know, your color correctors. There's there's many different levels within media or within print media that images have to go through to get the okay before it finally gets to the art director. So you have the last say, you have the art director, and then you have the project managers on in different departments that follow these these images for the campaign. It they they follow it, they take it from part department from one department to the next department. So there's many different eyes, many different hands that are looking at this and no one said anything. Now, maybe it must be a European thing because there's been other fashion houses that have been like in a a controversy when it comes to children or race or religion. I don't know. Maybe it's just a European thing. Maybe that's what the, these design houses are here. That's what they are about. You know, start the controversy, whatever it is. Let's get the people to talking. My my question is, is where is the energy when it comes to Balenciaga in this ad campaign? Where is the 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 cancel culture? That energy. Where is that energy at? It's a hot trending topic now, but just like Gucci, a few, uh, about three to four years ago, in the racist ads, the ad campaign that Gucci presented, it was an uproar. It was many people wanted to cancel the that design house. And it was a small, you know, it was a small, like, okay, let's uh, protest this and let's not buy Gucci. But within months, people were back patronizing that company. After their so-called apology. And the same thing is going to happen with Balenciaga. It's a hot topic now. It's, it's they're in a hot seat right now. They're gonna apologize, and then people gonna, you know, forget this. And that's the sickening part about it, because there were children involved. So you have to blame the the agency, the casting agencies, the the, the fashion agencies that that hire out the children. You have to. Blame the agent. Then you have to blame the parent. Because no child. During a a photo shoot. No child is there without a parent. So it's it's more than just blaming the company or the the design house of Balenciaga. It goes further than that. And it's very sickening. It's very disgusting. And yes, my eyes have been open. Like I said, you hear these these narratives and people brush it off as, okay, they're conspiracy theories. Yeah, no, that was my kick. Yeah, these are just conspiracy theories. I don't believe this. My eyes are open now. I have to be honest. But once again, one thing for sure is that I never, ever doubted anything that Ye has been saying. And it all makes sense now when he had 
the blowback from the Jewish community, it all makes sense. Do whatever that's needed to shut him up. To cancel him out completely or to paint him again as crazy. But we know for sure where that narrative started. Started from again from him being medicated. On psychotropic drugs. It makes sense now. Really makes sense now. So. We're going to have to keep an eye on this. I would like everyone to keep an eye on this. Because it seems. uh, There's a lot of weird things. A lot of weird things going on. And in my prediction actually. For the new year. Because see now. That we have many different podcast and content creators on different uh, social media sites and information is so readily at our fingertips that we really don't have to rely on mainstream news sources because we know their rhetoric we know their what they're trying to as far as information spinning the information to fit their narratives so my prediction of the next year 2023 I I really think that people are going to start doing more research and a lot more truths are going to be presented in an eye-opening way a lot of things are going to really open up as far as the entertainment industry the music industry movie industry the news news source information so that's my take on all of this again I, I'm, I'm very interested and I want to keep an eye personally I want to keep an eye on this but again Ye has been telling the truth Ye has been trying in in subtle ways he has been trying to tell everyone what is actually going on. And you know, before I go now, that time when when he decided to purchase a home across the street from Kim Kardashian and everyone again was painting him as crazy. Like he wanted to stalk Kim Kardashian but in all truth he knew exactly what was taking place and what was about to unfold so as a father as a strong father and dedicated father to his children yes he purchased a house across the street to keep an eye on his children but again The media got a hold of that story, put a spin to it, and canceled it out. Kanye's crazy. And that was... That was the narrative. And everybody bought it. So, again, it's going to be very interesting how things are going to unfold... Because it seems like a lot of businesses, a lot of uh, high-lying corporations. And I don't know, maybe it could be a situation that Balenciaga, maybe again, 
they do this for publicity. Maybe they are personally trying to in the in in just put it into that fashion house. Who knows? But again, it's going to be interesting to see how all this unfolds. Once again, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Hope some of the information that I presented was eye-opening. Again, as it was to me, very eye-opening. But as I said, we're going to keep an eye on this. Definitely for sure. Thank you so much again. Look forward to being with you another time. You have yourself a wonderful weekend. Be safe. And God bless.